This is the Prestigious Initiative. Welcome. I'm Chris Bean, and here with me is Chris Kent. Hello, Mr. Kent. Hello, sir. Today, we're going to be concluding our four-part series about creativity. And we're going to try to sum it up, try to come up with the summary of the talks we've done so far, along with kind of sustaining and expanding on the creativity that everybody already has within them. And so in, with sustaining and expanding as the the mindset or the the outcome or the direction for this episode, we'll talk about sustaining creativity momentum. And in order to sustain creativity momentum, that would imply that you have some momentum in creating things. And how does that happen? Well, you have it consistently or you do it consistently. You create things on a continual basis. And probably part of what that is, is you try things. Did this work? Yes. Good. Do it again. We talked about iterative testing a number of times already. And and in order to continue to do things, in my eyes, I am always evaluating how did it go what can I improve? How did I how did I do with this? Did the outcome uh, achieve what I wanted to? And if not, okay, what can I do to change it? Try the change. Yes, that worked. No, it didn't work. And then you continue on. Now, that's f- f- that's how my that's just how my brain works, perhaps. But as far as continuing to make things, right? So, if you have a creative endeavor that you are endeavoring in, that you're on the journey of, whether it's writing or you are a creative problem solver at work or you're making a podcast or whatever it is, don't do it one time and think, okay, great, I did that. I can check that box now, right? I mean, if you're a writer, write and continue to write and then share those things that you write with other people. Perhaps talk to a publisher and get them published, right? I I mean, if if you have something like that and and we did a whole episode on, on dealing with setbacks or no to things, um, put it out there. Somebody says, no, you, you, this is not good. We don't like this. Okay, fine. Go to somebody else and, and assume that everybody's going to say no. And eventually if somebody says yes, or when somebody says yes, awesome. That was the the outcome you didn't, that was the least outcome that you expected as you expect everybody to say no. And then, I mean, that's a way to essentially not get your feelings hurt as you're going through that, but continue to build and create and, and iterate and test as you go and and change and tweak and continue, right? Again, don't let one setback or one one stumble set you off track. Continue consistently to build and create and and to to do things, do whatever it is that you do. I've heard the analogy before, and maybe you guys have as well. I think it may be a common analogy, but they, they... Refer to your creative passion or your creative inspiration as your creative flame. I think that's a really good analogy in the sense that if you don't nurture or take care and sustain a flame, what happens to it? Well, it dies. And then it requires something from you to reignite that flame and get it back uh, to burning again. And so talking about sustaining your creativity and the creative momentum. And as you said, Mr. Bean, try not to let, try not to let it end. Don't stop doing, make sure you're continually trying to create things or engage in creative activities to to keep that ball rolling and keep that flame alive. Because again, when it, when it dies, it's going to require something from you to bring it back to life. So if you just keep it burning, then you don't have to put in that forth that extra effort to bring it back to life. And maybe, you know, maybe, you let it die and then it stays dead for a long time. And then it's even harder to bring back to life. It's the equivalent of, of the flame dying and then the wood gets wet and you can't, it, you know, the different things that can happen to that creative flame. So I really like that analogy in the sense that you need to nurture it and sustain it the same way you would a flame and constantly be feeding things into it. It doesn't have to be a lot. You don't need a big roaring blaze all the time necessarily, um, but to keep that alive and keep it burning and sustaining the work you've already put into it and the momentum that is is really feeding into your creativity in the sense, again, that it's easier to turn that flame into a blaze if it's already burning rather than going from nothing to... Again, I, just, I think that analogy is 
kind of consistent with what we're talking about and helps me to think about it. You know, a little bit is better than nothing. I can feed the flame a little bit rather than give it nothing and let it die because then I have to give it more to bring it back to life. So again, thinking about that creative flame and how important it is to sustain it is, is critical, you know, and I don't want it to seem like it's a chore necessarily, but just do a little, little bit of something creative and do a little bit of something creative. And then that keeps the momentum going. And then you have every once in a while gasoline that gets thrown on the fire. And then you do have that blaze and you can roll with it. But that gasoline would be ineffective if there was no flame at all. So sometimes we might miss some of that inspiration or or that momentum if we're not continuing to sustain that creativity. You know, and I think part of that perhaps is coming up with a kind of a bare minimum. Like if you're, if you're going to set goals to be creative, to set a realistic goal, and, and maybe you're, you have a goal that you want to strive for that will propel you and, and, and ignite that flame to grow even bigger, but then you have a, a bare minimum goal or bare minimum standard perhaps would be the other way to, to think about that is I have to do X, Y, Z is the bare minimum I have to, I can do all, you know, I can do all these other things and you have ideas, maybe write them down or whatever in, in, as you build this goal, but you have a procedure, a bare minimum. Like I have to do essentially like this is the, this is the bare minimum I can do. And maybe there's days or weeks or a month that you just do the bare minimum until you're ready for that gasoline to be thrown on and then you can ignite and, and grow. And, and then again, eventually that, and you, you say gasoline with gasoline, you know, that fire is going to grow huge and it's going to burn super big and, and be massive, but it, very quickly it will go back down to just a, a small flame. And so gasoline, and, and I would imagine, I do imagine that creative endeavors go like that, where th- you have a bare minimum, okay, just do just enough to get by and just enough to keep that flame going. And then every once in a while, somebody comes in and dumps gasoline on and you, get huge. And it's huge for just a little bit. And then it comes back down to bare minimum, bare minimum. And then and that's the cycle that you, that you kind of live in. And, and I would imagine, or I, I keep saying, I would imagine, I imagine that everybody's life is like that to a certain degree as well, where you do the bare minimum, just enough to get by each day, each day. And then every once in a while you have a week or a month where everything is just going right your way. And that's like the gasoline that's pouring on the fire. And then you go back to just do the bare minimum, just the bare minimum. And then the gasoline gets poured out and then so on. And it's the waves that you ride. Your creative endeavors are the same kind of thing. You're not always going to feel that fire burning passion for every single time you sit down to draw that art that you do. Every once in a while, it'll be there. Every once in a while, that that flame will really push you to do big, huge things. But sometimes you just got to do the day-to-day. Sometimes you, you have to just do the work. And it's work. Is it sometimes fun? Yes. Is it sometimes a, a blast? Yeah. Sometimes. But other times, it's just something you have to do. And it, maybe the, the a way to phrase that differently would be it's something that you get to do. So, again, it, I like the idea of, of, the, of the gasoline on the fire. And, and, well, not only just the gasoline on the fire, but thinking of your create, your creativity as the spark, the fire. And you have to try to keep that fire burning it doesn't have to be burning the house down sort of say but sometimes it just needs to be just a little pilot flame just just enough to just just the embers there and those goals that you're setting for yourself the bare minimum that you're talking about doing make sure that it's realistic meaning if it takes an hour and you have to uh, you know do a large amount of whatever your creative thing is i wouldn't consider that the bare minimum and you're probably not going to reach that goal every single day so when you're making that bare minimum, make it realistic that you can do every day or every so often, however you determine that you want to keep that uh, consistency, and then it's easier for you to reach that goal. And of course, you can always uh, surpass that goal. So on some days, you may feel more creative or have more time to be creative, or or you may force yourself to be more creative than other days. You can surpass that bare minimum, but again, the bare minimum is small. It's not like you have to do a whole lot to meet, reach the bare minimum but make it realistic and make it work with your life as well. And, you know, in those moments when you only did the bare minimum, don't think of it as just the bare minimum. You did the bare minimum. Awesome. Great job. 
celebrate that small victory, you know, celebrate that small win of, of keeping that, sustaining that flame as you continue to go on. So keep those two things in mind when you're setting those goals for yourself and trying to, to sustain that creativity. And speaking of sustaining, I think the longest period of time you could sustain something for is your entire life. And I think that being creative is something that we want to invest into, not just for a small portion of our life, but as long as we can continue to pursue creativity in the many different forms that we do. And this may not maybe, this is a bigger conversation to have, but, you know, look at creativity as a skill, a skill that you can develop and increase and pour into. And like all skills, they improve over time the more that you uh, devote to them or the more that you invest into them. So you have your whole life to sustain your creativity and then also develop that skill along the way and let that f that flame grow bigger or more fortified or let it change over time. And so, you know, we're sustaining this not just for a certain period, but as long as we can and doing everything that we can to develop that skill as well. You know, speaking of lifelong creativity, I think that part of that is being a lifelong learner where you are committed to seeking out and learning new things. And it doesn't necessarily have to be to your small area of creativity. You could learn how to, if you're, you know, if you're an artist, if you're a painter specifically, and you take an acting class, okay, well, that doesn't necessarily equate to art, art you know, the art that you're doing, the creativity endeavor that you have, but you may see inspiration there. Or you choose to read and you learn by reading and, and you, you know, as, as I do, I read books that are not necessarily storybooks, although storybooks you can certainly learn a number of things from. Just continually partake in new things. And I think that creating that that creating and learning to I mean you I think perhaps they in my eyes they would use the same area of your brain to to create something and to learn something because you are as you're learning things you're creating pathways in your brain that connect to different things and as you're learning something that might spark an interest into you that oh man I've never thought about this before because you, you didn't know it and so you learn that and then you can connect that to something that you can create or that you can connect to this thing and that thing. And then you have a whole list, list of further connections that you're making. As you're making those connections, if you are creative in, you know, making YouTube videos or, or writing or whatever, whatever it is, those connections that you make via the learning, whatever, if you're in a class learning, if you're reading or, or listening to, to lectures whatever it is, but those creative endeavors will be greatly benefited from the learning that will happen if you continue to learn. And, and learning is not something that ends when you graduate school. Okay, now, uh, now I'm in the job. I'm, I, I'm not learning it. Well, you're on a job. You probably, if you if you graduate high school and, and you are going into a new career, those first couple of days on the job are going to be huge with learning how to do that job. You're learning. Oh, but at school's already over. Yeah, but you're still learning. And then as you continue on, maybe you've done that job for five years. Okay, now are you still learning? Probably because then in five years' time, the way you do that job is probably different than the way you did it five years ago. And that continues to happen. And so you're learning all of this new technology or, or new ways to do this, or you get a a uh, a job advance, uh, not job investment, a, a promotion. With that promotion, you have to learn how to do that job then. So learning happens all the time anyways. And so if you accept that and be the type of person who is continuously learning things, then you are continuously ready to accept those new responsibilities that are thrown to you. And with that learning, in my eyes, that builds the connections that you can link into your creative side and then create more because of those connections that were made based on the learning that you endeavored in. Now, Creativity, when we talked a little bit about this last time, but creativity can be a, a one person type thing, meaning I create this one thing. Or it can be a collaboration where you get together with people and then create things. This podcast is a creative endeavor with just 
not just me, but with Mr. Ken as well. We collectively communicate and create this information for you, our listeners. If you are a a engineer on a team building whatever it is that you're working on, that team are your collaborators that you are gaining inspiration from, talking and, and t- tweaking and, and adjusting things together. And then you go do those things. That's, that's a creative endeavor that you're doing, not just with yourself or by yourself, but with a team. You have a, a, a team of collaborators that are there with you. Now, you may see yourself as a, I know if I'm a, I'm a lone, lone wolf. Okay, but you probably bounce ideas off of somebody. Get insight from somebody. Get inspiration from somebody or something. That would be your version of collaborating with people or with this with this media that you're getting inspiration from. So it's not just you by yourself locked in a room and it, you know there's nothing around. No, you probably have something that you're bouncing off off of uh, ideas for or you're you're gaining inspiration from whatever it is. That is your inspiration gathering. That is your your team of collaborators. You may not always see them as such, but I think if you could tweak your mindset on that and see, you know, your spouse that you're talking back and forth with, bouncing ideas off as a collaborator, then they they might give you better insight because you're asking different questions because you're seeing them as a collaborator with you building this creative endeavor, whatever it is, as opposed to your spouse that you're just asking questions for. Yeah, you know, the, we talked about before, even having a mentor or someone to, to guide you through something and bounce ideas off of or give you new ideas and the collaboration kind of takes that idea of a mentor and superimposes that or places that same role onto other people as well because you know even if you're creating something different you can still find inspiration or find a different way to look at something or find a way past those roadblocks or or uh, start to go down another path and you're already headed because of the other person who's on their own creative journey has their own inspiration has their own uh, kind of process that you may not have been aware of or thought of or even even knew existed before and so thinking of your creativity is not not as a me versus them but an us together even if our two creative things don't aren't the same thing they can come they can I can gather inspiration from your creative thing to influence my creative thing or if it is the same thing like you said this podcast we're doing the same thing together you have opinions and, and thoughts that I don't have, and I have opinions and thoughts that you don't have, and we come together and we, we create a thing together. And it, it, it's a collaboration, a joining of the two things. And to bring it back into the flame, you have your flame and they have their flame, and put the two flames together and it burns brighter and burns hotter because they're adding to each other. And so, you know, use that as a another tool, another way to help sustain that. In times that you may feel like your flame is going out or you're not as creative, and also in times when you are creatively charged because maybe the other person could use a little boost or maybe they could make your flame even better or the the, the intensity of your creative flame matches with the intensity of their creative flame and, and you, who knows what's going to happen. So use that as a, a tool, not to say that people are tools, but that collaboration and that, that you know, that uh, joining of the two creative minds or the taking of one to the other, it, it's a huge vital part of this creative process that sometimes can be overlooked because we are focused so singularly on our creative endeavor and we're maybe afraid to to draw inspiration from those other places but we've already talked about that as well and take it where you can get it because there's tons of different things out there and people out there and, and stuff that's going to help you on your own creative journey yeah you know all that as you're talking about having the other person that you're that you're bringing along this journey with it reminds me of, of creating synergy within your creative field which of course I, I mean that that can catapult you forward and build that flame even more and being able to share sometimes if your flame is running low or their frame uh, uh, flame is running low you can kind of share back and forth that what a, what a great great idea for that well this has been such a good talk about creativity you now we're on on part four uh, Mr. Kent, do you have anything anything to kind of close creativity with? No, sir. I, you know, we took many different approaches and we really looked at creativity and 
different ways than I have anyway. And, you know, we just talked about it today. It's part of that larger conversation, but the idea of whether or not you are born creative or you learn creative and how I think that's a little mix of both. And either if you're born with it or you learn it, I think it's still important to invest your time into your creativity because it's a, a huge part of being human. But then also I think it, it's, it's a, a wonderful way to elevate every part of your life. And so whatever creativity looks like for you, I you know I encourage everyone to kind of lean into it. Yeah, you know, and I, I don't know that I had a stance one way or another before we started this, but um, as far as if creativity is something you're born with or if, or if it's an actual skill, um, but after after going through these these talks, I I firmly think it's a skill. I firmly believe that creativity is a skill, and, and a skill is something that can be gained over time. A skill is something that can be honed and improved on. And are some people born with natural talents of creativity? Yes. Does that mean that if you are not necessarily born, quote unquote, with the natural talent of creativity, that you can never be creative in anything ever that you do? No, I, I, I wholeheartedly believe that's false. So I believe that if you, whether you're born creative and you continue to be creative or you're born in uncreative and then you develop that creativity or you foster that creativity, that is skill and you learn and you hone that later on in life, either way, I think everybody can be creativity. They, they can be creativity. Uh, everybody can be creative in something or multiple things that they do. So... Dear listeners, thank you for joining us. Until next time, be prestigious.